Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and I just want to start off the video by saying that I'm actually dying, ladies and gentlemen. I think I had the flu or some viral infection, and uh, I was completely bedridden yesterday, so, uh, you know, I, instead of going stir crazy, I decided to come to my computer and talk about good old Google Chrome and having our actual ad blockers threatened. Now, you might be wondering, whoa, Muda, as a YouTuber, shouldn't you be against ad blockers? And uh, yeah, obviously it would benefit my finances if you guys just watched all the ads. But I have always been pretty much open by saying I would be comfortable making far less money if it meant that my viewers were safe at the end of the day. So today's video is gonna be a bit more technical, but I want it to be a video where you learn something about ad blockers, and again, which browser you should probably be using. Now there's a pretty good chance that most of you guys are using something like Google Chrome. <coughs> If you guys look at the actual browser market share, you can see that Chrome is sitting at 65.7% of actual browsers being used by the world. That's just Google Chrome. And of course, for all you Mac and iPhone users, you're probably on Safari, 18.2%. Uh, I believe even with iPhones, if you're downloading like Google Chrome, you're still effectively just using Safari. But correct me if I'm wrong. If you're a Microsoft Edge user, 5.3%. Uh, uh, furry Fox user, that's when you start actually changing up the actual browsers. But Samsung Internet and Opera, these are all just Chrome browsers with a different face paint attached to them. So that's how big Chrome is in today's day and age, ladies and gentlemen. It is by far one of the largest browsers that is used by the world, okay? And if you want to get into the browser wars, you know, phase one, it used to be Internet Explorer versus the world. Now it's literally just Google Chrome versus basically a two or three percent drop to any other like browser out there, whether that be like Safari, whether that be something like Firefox. Google Chrome is here to stay. And even if you don't use Google Chrome, you might even just be using a different version of Chrome or Chromium in this case. So again, ladies and gentlemen, why are we making this video? One of the things that I saw on my good old-fashioned Reddit board, ladies and gentlemen, was, Muda, it's happening. Chrome automatically deactivated uBlock Origins when updated. Also, it's no longer available. So immediately when I saw this, I was like, uh-oh, this is coming down the road. We've talked about it for like a year at this point. But uh, yeah, today it seems like we're getting to the point where Google is actually shutting down one of those big ad blocking extensions. So in order to verify this myself, I decided to go to the Chrome Web Store and on uBlock, I wasn't noticing a blurb, but that's because I'm using Brave Browser, which is also Chromium to an extent too. No, this really came out to a bunch of people discovering it through what is known as the Chrome Canary build. So immediately when I went to Chrome Canary, which is designed mostly for developers, a nightly build where you can try out Chrome and some of the newest stuff being fed in before it's actually fed into the stable build that most people download. Immediately I noticed Linux is not supported. So because I'm a Linux user and I come across tons of unsupported software, I decided to fire up a virtual machine and lo and behold, uBlock Origins is giving me a bit of an error to an extent where some users can't even actually install the extension themselves. Now, generally speaking, if you're browsing it right now, you might be told this extension may soon no longer be supported because it doesn't follow best practices for Chrome extensions. And what are those best practices, ladies and gentlemen? Well, it all comes down to something known as Manifest V3. So to give you guys a little bit of an updating before we get into Manifest V3, one of the actual requests that a lot of those popular ad blockers like uBlock Origins is using is something known as the Chrome.web request. Now, as of Manifest V3, the web request blocking permission is no longer available for most extensions. Consider declarative net request, which enables use of this different API, aside from web request blocking. So this is, again, one of the big pivotal changes. And one of the ways that Google sold us on Manifest V3 over the V2, which is currently what's being used, is things like security. So for instance, Manifest V3 for, again, Chrome 88 or later. And again, we're a little bit beyond Chrome 88, but yeah, Manifest V3, it's one of those things where when you're updating a browser, you go from a slow transition like, you don't want to be like Apple, where you literally are just like, hey guys, uh, you better start fucking porting your applications within the next update, otherwise they're never going to be used again. You do a gradual transition, so again, people don't just update their software and have like half of their extensions not working. So the way that it was kind of billed is obviously that at the end of the day, no matter what, 
these Manifest V3 extensions allow you to be a bit safer than Manifest V2. Now, I want to say that there is truth to what Google is saying over here. Manifest V3 is a lot safer if you're getting rid of a lot of those broad permissions. But let's be a little bit honest, okay? This is Google's uh, 2008 to 2024 revenue. Uh, and a lot of this comes from, you guessed it, advertising. Google is first and foremost a company where it makes most of its money through advertising dollars. So it's kind of a bit of a benefit for Google, who is one of the largest browsing like firms in the world, web browsing firms, to also support the browser not having or facilitating easier ad block. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is an actual piece from December 21st, 2022 from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, okay? The FBI alone recommends that you use something like an ad blocking extension when you perform internet searches. Most internet browsers allow a user to add extensions, including extensions that block advertisements. These ad blockers can be turned on or off within a per browser to permit advertisements on certain websites. Yeah, when you get the FBI telling you to use an ad blocker, there's a pretty good reason for it, okay? I've covered tons of stuff that I've seen float through YouTube or Google's advertising system in the past, where it literally felt like hackers were abusing the ad systems to distribute malware or fish for users who didn't really know any better. In fact, in one case, I was almost fished and I almost had my YouTube channel stolen by potentially downloading a fake version of OBS Studio which is a piece of software that most YouTubers, if not all, use to record their desktops, whether it be for gameplay or just, you know, general desktop recordings. Like they literally describe, cyber criminals purchase advertisements that appear within internet search results using a domain that is similar to an actual business or service. When a user searches for that business or service, these advertisements appear at the very top of search results with minimum distinction between an advertisement and an actual search result. I mean, literally, if you go to google.com right now and you like search for something, you really do have to look for the ad denotion, uh, which is a really tiny marker in compared to the rest of the actual results out there. Which again, for Google, it's important that they push their advertisements to the top. You probably end up clicking some of these ads. For me, they don't really show up. And even if they do, I can't click on them because I use something known as network-wide ad blocking using a pie hole a video that I've made in the past where I showed you how to build your own network-wide ad blocker. On the cheap, by the way. <clears throat> so yeah, when you got like law enforcement agencies telling you to use ad blocking solutions, you probably should consider them. Because at the end of the day, ad blockers, I would say are about more, well, you know, it used to be like people would talk about like antivirus software, but I think common sense is the best antivirus software. I do think on a personal level, ad blocking solutions are a great way to protect yourself from a lot of phishing scams that exist, not just on, again, Google's ad network, but usually any ad network, whether it be Facebook's, whether it be Microsoft, there's plenty of scumbags who abuse these advertising platforms to cause you harm. And this is the best way for you to protect yourself. Now, obviously, if you're on something like YouTube where the TOS prevents you from using an ad block, consider whitelisting the website or getting YouTube premium. But again, that's really up to you on a personal level. Now to give you an idea, it's not that like ad blockers are completely dead. For instance, one of the largest ad blocking solutions, uBlock Origins, has released a light version, which is again, you know, it's one that works for extension Manifest V3. But obviously, would I consider it to be as effective as the original ad block? No, but it's not entirely useless. The thing is, for some of these ad blocks to work, they have to update and kind of gimp themselves a little bit just so they can work underneath Google Chrome. Now look, I'm not gonna sit here and deny that Google doesn't care about the safety and security of its user base as well. I think they do, but obviously for a company that is pretty much running one of the largest advertising firms in the world, it's pretty much a fucking kick in the balls if they distribute a browser that allows you to very easily download effective ad blockers, thus hurting their own primary business, right? And it's one of those things where if you go back to August of 2024, Google in a actual case was labeled a monopolist. This is from the actual DOJ, where they notify that Google is a monopolist and has acted as one to maintain its monopoly. 
So they said that Google, you know, uh, there are relevant product markets for general search services, general text ads. Google has monopoly power in those markets. Google's distribution agreements are exclusive where they actually talk about defaults, where they pay shit tons of money to, I believe, Samsung and Apple to maintain being the default option on search, which obviously for a lot of people, they don't really change their defaults. So a lot of the competition, even competition as large as Microsoft, don't really have a fair advantage when fighting against Google and their pre-existing agreements. So, and it's because of these decisions that the Justice Department is considering breaking up Google. And this is a video that I wanna make after I think Shenmue 2, which is coming out towards the end of the year, uh, not end of the year, sorry, end of this month, because I've been talking about it for a while and I might as well get it out. It's basically on its way done. But uh, this is one video what I wanna cover where I talk about Google's like monopoly because this is about as insane as the Microsoft monopoly situation like back in the 90s. In fact, this might be even wilder than that. And of course, when you look into it, the DOJ wants to consider breaking up Google's search engine and possibly AI stuff because yes, it is that heavy. They are that you know entrenched in the market that there really can't be any real competition. And of course, for a company like Google, where it's not even just their advertisements, it's literally also a situation where even purchasing their hardware basically exposes you to a level of spying that I think should creep anyone out. This report by Cyber News, where they basically actually did their uh, investigation and they uh, used a man in the middle approach to intercept the traffic between a Pixel 9 Pro XL and Google servers. And they found out that the phone literally would actually constantly send information uh, according to them, such as the user's email address, phone number, and location to various Google endpoints around every 15 minutes. Like imagine how creepy that is that the cell phone that you bought that you paid good money for actually spies on you every 15 minutes. I mean, it's not even just the advertising and the ad blocking. It's literally also having to be watched by literally a third set of parents that you've gotten through Google <laughs> who just watch what you do every 15 minutes. Now look, at the end of the day, it's not just me who talks about it. It's another group known as the Electronic Frontier Foundation that I highly respect that has pretty much written up exactly why some of the new extensions and APIs that Google has passed is just nearly inadequate. And of course, the big problem is obviously Google's dominance on the market. Look, if Google wants to kill ad blockers, I think it's very important that you guys drop Google Chrome and switch to a browser that respects your freedoms and most importantly, also your privacy. And there's a few options out there that I highly recommend. One of them would be Firefox. While I personally don't use Firefox myself, I think this might be one of the best uh, alternatives, if not the only fucking alternative to Google's engine itself. Now the browser that I use on a personal basis is something known as Brave Browser, which obviously is Chromium based, but they have a lot of stuff built in that gives you ad blockers by default and anti-tracking by default that I think is far better than most other Chromium based browsers that you can get on the market. Even browsers like Opera GX, which I don't recommend myself, but if you wanted to have the entire fun of extensions that Google doesn't provide you, it's still a far fucking better alternative than what Google Chrome is giving you. But if you're really, and I mean really worried about your privacy, the best browser that you can use is something known as Mulvad. Now, of course, you can go to Mulvad and download their browser and literally get access to an open source privacy respecting solution. And if you choose to get Mulvad VPN, which is the only VPN I can endorse, and they don't gotta pay for anything, this is the only VPN that I think is important and the only VPN that truly will protect you from any form of surveillance. These are the only people that care about your actual security, that's it. These are the only options that you have. What Google has shown is that they care more about, again, I, uh, running ads to you, making your entire experience less freeing, because again, restricting the user is, is, is never a good play. And I think that's something that Google is trying to push with its obvious browser dominance. And I think if you're a Chrome user and you care about, again, being free and safe on the internet, maybe it's time to drop Google Chrome and switch to its actual competition. And maybe in doing so, Google Chrome might decide to revert these changes and possibly keep ad blocking solutions for all. Look, I have no problem with ads myself, but when ads become malicious, which I have shown time and time throughout my channel that they do, ad blockers are absolutely necessary. And I think it's really, really, really stupid to be getting rid of them, especially when we haven't addressed the real, you know, scumbags who operate in this space. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it, I. I'm out.